In the last video we saw how to load an HTML template and return that as a response in Django. And to do that we saw these lines of code, line 10 here, we fetch the name of the template. Then we create optionally a context which contains objects we want to actually render inside the HTML. And then finally we return a response and we call the template.render method. And the result of this view code that we can see here is to take each question that we got back from the database and to render a link on this page to the individual question page. So when we click this question here, is Django better than React? We are taken to the detail page for that question and we can see the ID here. Now what we're going to look at in this video is a very useful shortcut function in Django and it's going to take these three lines of code and reduce them to a single line of code. And that function here, this shortcut function, is the render function. Now the reason this shortcut exists is because this pattern here is very common and by that I mean we need to fetch a template so we call loader.getTemplate and then we have some kind of data we want to pass into the template known as context data and then finally we want to render that template and return the response. So that is a very common practice if you have a classical Django web application that's returning HTML responses. And we can take advantage of the render function in order to cut down the amount of code that we have inside the view. So what I'm going to do is comment these three lines of code out and we can now use the render function instead. So let's return the render function here and we're going to pass some arguments into that. As you can see in VS Code, the first argument is the request. So that's passed into the Django view and we pass that down into the render method. Now the second argument is going to be the name of the template. So we had the name here, it was the polls slash index.html template. So we can use that as the second argument to render. And the third argument, which is optional, is the context we want to pass into the template. So we can copy this dictionary that we defined here and we can paste that in here. So now that we've added the render method, let's go back to the user interface here and go back to the list page. If we refresh this page, you can see we get the same content in the response. So this is now working, but we've cut down on the amount of code that we've defined in the view. So let's remove this commented out code and we can go down to two lines of code plus this comment here. And that's going to be really useful as you develop Django applications. You are very often going to want to return a particular HTML template with some particular context data passed in. And the render shortcut gives you a nice way to do so. And what we can also do if we're using the render function is remove this import here of the loader function from Django.template. So let's remove that. And if we're going to use render in all of these, we can also remove HTTP response. I'm not going to do that just now, but we are going to build out these views and use render as we progress through the series. Now I want to highlight something just before we finish the video and it's something I mentioned at the end of the last video. Right now we're passing this context and it contains the key of latest question list but I did mention at the end of the last video you can pass as much data as you want into this context dictionary. So what I'm going to do is pull this out and I'm going to define a variable called context and this is another common pattern you'll see in Django applications and we're going to set that to the dictionary. I'm going to move this to a key on each line and what we can do is we can define another key and another value here to pass into the HTML template. So let's say I have some numbers here that we want to pass in and this is just dummy data for demonstration purposes and we define the numbers 1 to 5. What this means is that we can then access these inside index.html. Now this was the HTML template we built up in the last video but let's say underneath all of this code we want to add some more code. And in a Django template, if we want to refer to the name of a variable inside the context, we can use the two curly braces and then the name of the context key. In this case, it's numbers. If we save this and go back to the user interface and refresh this page, we now see the numbers here. And of course, because this is a collection or a list, we can then iterate over these and we can do anything we want with each individual element. And I want to show the concept of a template filter here. So if we go back to the template, I'm going to look at the numbers that we have here, but let's say that we weren't interested in each of the numbers. We just wanted the length of the collection, in this case, the length of the list. What we can do is use a template filter in Django, and we have one of these called length. Now, a template filter is defined using this bar here, and then the name of the filter after that. And these are just small functions that can transform the value of a variable before it is displayed inside the template. So you write the name of the variable, then we have this pipe here, and then the name of the template filter. And if we use the length filter here, we can go back to the user interface, and this time the numbers that we see here in the list are gonna be replaced with a single number, and that's the number five, because the length of that list is five elements. 
So that's just a bonus at the end of the video. We've seen how to use a template filter in Django in order to transform a variable inside the HTML template. But more importantly, we saw inside the view function how to condense the number or the number of lines of code that we're writing by using the render shortcut function. What we're going to do in the next video is we're going to look at handling 404 not found errors. And Django provides another handy shortcut function that we can use in that context. So we'll look at that in the next video. If you want to support the channel, check out our coffee page. It's just below the video. And don't forget to like and subscribe as well. And if you have any ideas for content, drop them in the comments. And we'll see you soon in the next video.